stomp, 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 stomp. Chicago rebuilt again. We Decepticons have already stomped this city flat. Giant monsters have stomped this city flat. Yet we keep rebuilding. This is time we go tag team. Decepticons and monsters. Now, where's the giant monster to tag team with me? What the poop is this thing supposed to be? The dinosaur penguin. This channel gets weirder every week, doesn't it? Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and here we are at week two of Rampage Month. And now we're going into celebrating and commemorating one of my favorite monsters in the series, Lizzie the Lizard, who unfortunately is now an alligator in the new movie. But we're going to take a look at something reasonably close to the idea that originally inspired her for the game. We're taking a look at the 1987 Decepticon Interceptor Snapdragon. Snapdragon was released in 1987, and he would also be available for a short time in 1988. He'd be discontinued entirely by 1989, and we would not get a replacement for him. Snapdragon is the other Headmaster Horrorcon. As you remember last week, we covered his partner Ape Face. So now we're going to take a look at the only other Horrorcon. How does he rate to his partner? Well, we'll see. For starters, we'll take a look at Snapdragon and his articulation. Of course, first things first, we'll fold down the chest panel so you can take a look at his rolled stats. Again, the mechanism works just the same. It's keyed to the way the head is designed. It would be interesting to get some of the others and pluck some of them in to see how they would turn it out. Oh well, perhaps in a future video. For articulation, Snapdragon does have a joint at the shoulder. It does allow him to rotate almost all the way around. Now if we shift the gun over, he does go all the way around. He does have a small joint at the elbow, but it bends backwards instead of the normal way. And as you can see there, it was pretty stiff. He does have a joint at the hip. So it allows you to bend the hip up about 90 degrees, and he can also bend at the knee at 90 degrees, but this is the way it's double jointed. He has a pretty good range of motion at his legs. Again, just like with his partner, Ape Face, last week, that's pretty good for a transformer of his size. All right, let's get started transforming Snapdragon. And, of course, we're going to start by removing his guns. And then we remove his head. You can take a somewhat look at it. It's pretty much the same as what you saw with Ape Face. He does the opposite side as the other head. Get it out of the way here. We'll look at Crunk later. Now next, we're going to shift the arms up just a little bit. And we bend him at the elbow. Like I said, it bends backward. It only goes one click, so don't force it any further than that. Then after that, you're going to want to fold, take the fists right at the top of the purple section for his fists and fold it down to form to form feet. 
think we may have this a little bit backward, but we'll find out here in a moment. Next thing you do, yep, is so we're going to fold, fold the cockpit up just a little bit here so that we can fold up this panel right there. Then next, we got to turn him upside down and rotate the legs backward like so. All the while then we flip the cockpit totally up and then bend the nose out just one bit. Like that. Exactly like that. Sit back there so you can see it a little. And now comes the really fun part, folks, because this is a pain. You're gonna take the side, you're gonna take the legs, and we're gonna fold them downward like so. And then you'll bend them backward at the knee like that. So you basically want to get this turquoise part pointing upward like this. And then next, you'll fold out the turquoise section on both sides. And for the final step, this large purple section in here, you just pull it out, fold it all the way forward. Then you'll take the head like so and plug it in. And there you have Snapdragon's alternate mode, a dinosaur. And it's kind of one of those, seriously, this is a dinosaur? Because it does not look like any really known dinosaur. But, let's take a look at it. What do we got? Articulation-wise, you can't open the mouth a bit. And the neck does move, so you can... Make him look in some odd directions. You do get some movement with the claws there and at the forearm, but as you can see, with him extending it like that, you got all this left here, so looks pretty dumb. The legs do rotate there at the hip. Of course, you can also straighten the knee out if you need to. Make him look a little taller. Let's do that. Stretch that out a little bit. Make him look a little taller. Nope, nope. Still looks pretty stupid like that. Like something just rolled by here. Yep, yep. Piece of plastic did. Alright, this might be a good time to warn you, warn many of you, that these, uh, the fins, you know, the wingtips here, this plastic does get brittle and does break rather easily. You can see this one here is all intact. This one over here, just in the simple act of transforming him, just broke on me. Oh well, a little hobby glue and that'll fix him right back up, but we won't do that until this review is finished. Because how long it'll take for him to dry. Alright. Before we have any other problems, let's get him into his last mode. For starters, take the head off. Then we're going to fold down the blue dinosaur arms. And fold up the purple feet. Going to rotate the legs, oh, the arms, the dinosaur arms up like so to get them flush with the body and then you rotate the dinosaur legs to rest against the arms and you'll turn it over here fold down the wings flip back this panel and of course secure the nose and then for some added detail we mount these fins onto the holes here on the engines 
And of course, for even further fun, in the turquoise dinosaur arms underneath, you can mount the guns for a little bit of an attack mode. And now we'll bring up the head, fold out his legs, and we have Kronk. Of course, Kronk's articulation is almost like it was for Spasma. The arms do fold out, but they are very tricky. They only go out about so far, so they're not really worth moving. You can move the legs at the knee just the one time and you can bend both legs at the hip exactly the same time now you will want to be careful about all these teeth that are on here I mean the transformer collector's book by Mark Bellomo describes them as little razors and while I myself have yet to be cut by them the ones especially down here on the feet are somewhat on the sharp side. They, there's more to it when you feel them. The ones on the arms and up here at the head, well the head ones feel kind of as hard as the ones down here on the feet. So, the ones on the arms are a little softer, but do be careful handling him. Anyway, just hold him up here legs open the cockpit sideways and just drop him in and here we go the plane mode which as we can see bears some inspiration from the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird at least from the top it can reasonably bluff it. Looking at it at the side, it's a little too fat for it, but just like Ape Face, Snapdragon does swoosh pretty good. He's got permanent landing gear. He's got a little more weight to him, so he doesn't roll quite as good, but it is still passable. So, not too bad. Alright, let's take a look now at Snapdragon's loose parts, and as you can see, he has just a little bit more than what his partner Ape Face did. Start again by giving you all a look at Krunk. A little more colorful. And of course you can see his whole back is dominated by Snapdragon's head. And then next we have two of these rifles. They're listed as gyro guns. And aside from the long barrel, there's really nothing fancy about these guns. And then lastly, we have these blue, two of these turquoise fins. They're listed as booster fins on the instructions they're both exactly the same there's nothing different about them so makes it easy to get replacements if you need them and that's the parts all right now we're going to take a look at snapdragon's instructions though they only show him holding one gun As you can see here, on getting the jet completed, there's considerably more than what has to be done with Ape Face. They give you a nice bigger picture here of the head, so dinosaur fans ought to appreciate that. And now transforming him into the dinosaur. little bit of effort, but not too bad. Now I forgot to show off that the guns could be mounted 
on the backside of the dinosaur. But I sincerely can tell you, as you saw there in the opening video, they really don't help his his they don't really improve his looks that much. And then we got turning him into the robot. Which, again, isn't a bad job to do, but it's probably the best mode he looks in. Put on all these stickers, including some on the airplane. And lastly, we got the rub sign, the robot points, and the tech specs. Nothing new here. But now we'll move to the tech spec. Do, do, do. Here we go, one tech spec. And just like on Ape Face, it has a picture of the robot and the creature mode. And you notice how the creature mode looks better on the drawing than in toy mode. It's done up in purple to show he's a Decepticon, even lists him as such. It gives his name as Snapdragon, and his function is Interceptor. His motto is, if it doesn't get you dirty, it's not worth doing. Wading up to his neck in grease is his idea of a good time. Lazy, difficult to motivate, but has a hair trigger temper. Binary bonded to Krunk. The vicious, vile bodyguard to the Nebulan leader, Lord Zarek. Now, Lord Zarek is binary bonded to the Decepticon headmaster leader, Scorponok. So, if you've got Scorponok, you're going to want Snapdragon here to be his bodyguard. In jet mode, maximum speed, 8,800 miles per hour. Has two independent booster fins. In reptile mode... Carbon steel claws and teeth can cut through almost anything. Has two balance-destroying gyro guns in robot mode. They fail to mention he can also have them on the dinosaur. All right, now we lay the decoder here, and let's see how he stacks up. It lists his strength as 10. His intelligence and speed are 9. His endurance is 8, his rank is 6, his courage is 7, as is his firepower and skill. So he's about as strong as Ape Face, but a little less on the courage and firepower. So, but still, you're talking an equally powerful Transformer here. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of him? Snapdragon's an interesting sort of character. He's one of those that likes to be lazy, so it makes you wonder what motivated him to get involved with the Decepticons in the first place. The More Than Meets the Eye guidebooks describe that even his own personal quarters are so cluttered that any Decepticon sent to rouse him from it hates that thought of having to go get him out of there. Since usually that's the thing that gets him quick on his temper is the fact that somebody has interrupted his lazy time. So he's ready to go out and get into a fight with whoever did it. Normally the Decepticon sent to get him up is probably the one that gets the first beating. Next would be everybody else outside. It's interesting how they connect him to Scorponok in the way that the headmaster here is the bodyguard to Scorponok's headmaster. Not much is said in the lore whether Snapdragon carries over that same desire to protect Scorponok, although it is said that Krunk is almost as lazy and hard to motivate as Snapdragon is, so... They at least have that going for them together. As the toy, the robot mode is the best mode of the three, honestly. If I gotta pick one for a second, it's obvious it's the jet mode. 
the SR-71 inspired look on him doesn't look too bad from some angles. Although I think Hasbro might have been a little bit smarter and probably went along with making him look a little bit more like a Night Raven from the G.I. Joe toy line, which was also inspired by the same airplane. I think that look would have went a little bit better on Snapdragon. The dinosaur mode? Well, let's just say the less said about that, the better. I mean, most people criticize the rubber-suited monsters that we see in a lot of the Japanese films, and Snapdragon definitely looks worse than many of them, with probably some exception to some of them that were seen in the Power Rangers. Snapdragon's dinosaur mode probably would fill, fit right at home there. All in all, though, I think Snapdragon, still like Apeface, deserves to be in the middle tier. They are both, like his partner, he is an insanely powerful Decepticon, and he does get some bonus points being tied to the big playset Scorponok. So you can't argue with that, but he loses a fair amount of points due to the jet mode and especially that dinosaur mode. So middle tier on this one, folks. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Decepticon Interceptor Snapdragon. I want to give a special shout out to my brother at Cyclonus150 for the donation of Larry the Dino Penguin here. And we'll give thanks to the Midway Game Company back when it was in business for giving us Rampage. And of course making Lizzie here possible to join us this week. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. Please also consider leaving a like for this video and share your thoughts of Snapdragon in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying Rampage Month is still a go. I'll catch y'all later.